Today we're dealing with the frustrating problem of your Frigidaire refrigerator, your French door which has the freezer in the bottom, not making ice up here in this ice maker. It's either really slow producing ice or it's not doing anything at all. And I wanna show you how to fix that today. I'm going to give you four or five different ways to solve this from not being able to actually open this at all because it's blocked full of ice up to doing the repair that Frigidaire suggests to solve everything on this. It can go from being a very quick problem to solve up to a very complex thing, and we're gonna go through everything today in this master video. I do have the product repair kit that Frigidaire built to solve all the problems here. Um, I have a link to it in the description, so if you wanna purchase that to really fix it, do that. Otherwise, try these other things to start with, and we're just gonna go through it today. If you can't remove the ice bucket, or maybe you can, but you notice a lot of frost buildup, the first thing I would suggest trying is a forced defrost. To do this on most Frigidaire refrigerators, you're going to press and hold these two buttons on the right side for about 12 seconds. As you press them, you'll hear the fans turn off inside the unit as well as a few other noises. Then the letters DF will appear, showing that you are in forced defrost mode. To stop running this forced defrost mode, Simply press and hold the same two buttons again for about 10 seconds and it will remove from the screen. If you find that your ice maker is still frozen up one way or another, one way to get this unstuck is to use a garment steamer to thaw it out by inserting it into where the ice would come out and then press the trigger. Absolutely don't use a heat gun or hair dryer unless it's on a very mild air setting as you don't want to warp the cabinet on the inside. A Bissell steam shot like this one's rather affordable on Amazon and I will include a link for that in the description. Once you've done these two things, maybe it's fixed your ice maker, which would be great, but oftentimes the problem just simply comes back. So let's dig deeper into the Frigidaire ice maker system and work a little bit more on these fixes. To remove the ice maker, to start, there are two screws on the ice maker facade that need removed here with a quarter inch Phillips screwdriver or a drill gun like I have here. Once you have these two screws taken out, you can remove the facade by lifting up and out. Next are two more screws to remove. The first one on the left side of the ice maker here, you'll need a quarter inch hex head to remove that screw. And then there's one holding this wire cover on top. It's a little bit difficult to get to if you're using a drill gun, so you probably need to use a screwdriver instead. Once you have that screw out, you can pull down on the cover and then away. There are small tabs on the rear side of that cover holding it in place. Now on the inside of the ice maker, you're going to see two wire harnesses. You're going to press in on the clips and these two wire harnesses need separated. The small tabs were very hard for me to press and remove because this Frigidaire refrigerator was a little bit older when we worked on this fix. It did take a little bit more effort than I thought. Now you want to remove the ice maker itself. There are two pieces to this housing and you need to be careful. If you press in on the tab and pull, the ice tray and lever system are going to come out just by itself, but not the top of the housing. I would suggest pulling on the top of the chassis towards you instead of the ice maker area as it is quite flimsy, but both of these came out pretty easily. When you pull the ice maker out, there's going to be a wire trunk on the right side that is tied into the ice maker with cable ties. You'll have to remove these cable ties with either side snips or scissors, and this part's really difficult to film. Make sure you don't nick or damage the wires. This is kind of delicate to do. Again, once you have those cable ties taken care of, you're going to be able to just remove the ice maker. I would note that it's cracked and damaged, so I'm going to have to replace this during filming. I'll have a link to the ice maker for this style refrigerator in the description if in case yours is damaged, and I'm going to, again, have to replace it on camera. With ice maker out, now we need to remove the ice box. There are two quarter inch screws in the top of the cabinet in the front that you're going to remove here. Once you have those two screws out, it's time to fully remove the ice box. Note that there are two wires that we had separated from the harnesses earlier, and you need to make sure that you take special attention to these when you pull the ice box out. These two wires need to be routed through this small hole in the top of the ice box when you remove it. You should be able to now just gently pull the ice box forward and out. There's also that wire harness in the rear. Make sure that it doesn't get snagged on the box during the removal process, and it does take a little bit of effort to pull that box out, but there's nothing else really holding it in place at this point. In the case of my Frigidaire refrigerator, the air handler doesn't look in very good shape. To get to the culprit of most of these problems on a Frigidaire ice maker, we now need to remove three screws from this housing. 
The quarter inch screw in the upper left corner is by far the worst screw you're going to have to deal with on this refrigerator, and it's more the worst than all appliances. You have very little room to remove it. You want a very long 12 inch extension on a screwdriver or drill gun to remove it. Make sure to remove it very carefully. This screw loves to fall out and away from you when it's taken out. Now the other two screws on the right are far easier to take care of, and again, they're all quarter inch here. You wanna make sure to support the air handler with your hand because this thing is really heavy, probably about eight pounds at this point. Another thing to note is it's easy for me to remove the air handler here because it's totally defrosted, but it's possible your handler could be very frozen up and difficult to remove, so be very careful. You'd wanna hit it with a garment steamer, a box fan, or a hair dryer at a very, very low, if any, heat. Once you can get the air handler off, there's going to be a wire harness on the left side. You're going to have to depress the two tabs on the sides and remove that harness from the handler. And now you can remove the air handler fully. Once that is gone, you can inspect the evaporator cover system. And holy cow, this one is destroyed. To remove the evaporator cover system, you're going to need to take a screwdriver or needle nose pliers and press in on the plastic tab of the wire harness and then once that's depressed, push the wire harness rearward to remove it out of this evaporator cover. Once that's done, you should be able to just slide the cover off downward. But again, there's the possibility that the evaporator coils are frozen holding this in place and you don't want to force it. It should be pretty easy. Again, garment steamer, hair dryer, or fan at the absolute coolest setting to remove any massive ice buildup that could be present on these coils. Again, on my case though, there was a very light coat of frost, which I was able to simply pull down on the recover to fully remove it. With the cover removed, you can see that this was actually the problem on this particular refrigerator. The cover is absolutely destroyed at the bottom, which would cause a ton of moisture to get into the ice making system, causing the whole system to freeze up with extra ice and moisture and just jam everything up. The coils weren't able to defrost faster than what having the ice build up. So again, this is our particular problem on this unit. There are a few things to check here with the evaporator cover off. First, inspect the drain line at the bottom. This area loves to freeze up, causing extra moisture buildup. You may want to flush this with warm water just to make sure it can flow freely. One issue we had on this unit was behind the refrigerator. Rust began to form directly behind this due to the styrofoam being waterlogged. I cut the panel out and fixed it, but if it was minor, you may be able to just get away with drying it out from the inside. Next, inspect the defrost sensor at the top. I didn't film myself doing this because I know it worked, but if the sensor looks like it's damaged and swollen, it will need replaced. You can also test these electrically. The sensor can be removed from the wire harness by pressing the wires out from the inside of this harness with a very small screwdriver or a connector pick. The sensor should show continuity, again in sub-zero weathers. You could test this out in a glass of ice water or making sure the sensor is extremely cold one way or another. Let's say you've gone through and defrosted the unit through the user interface. You've used a garment steamer and cleaned it out. You can't find anything necessarily uh, damaged with the ice maker, but the frost is returning and it's coming in every few weeks and you see that big frost pattern on the back where the coils are what do you do well the best way to deal with this is to go purchase the frigidaire ice maker repair kit they make an oem kit and it comes with all these different things here the reality is there's a horrible air gap in these cabinets that develops over time typically that causes all your issues so let's go back to the housing from having the housing out and show you how to repair and get this fixed once and for all. If you can, make sure to buy from the link or at least inspect what you're supposed to get. I actually ordered two kits from two different suppliers and got different parts. The eBay order, which I'm installing, didn't come with the new revised water line, which isn't good because you want to install as much as possible, especially on the fact that both of these kits were the same price. Your kit does come with an instruction manual and I'm generally following that one with a few small modifications here and there. First, let's start by removing the contents of the old air handler. We need to remove the metal fork from the auger first. The screw that holds it in place is countersunk and simply twisting it clockwise won't get it out. I used a strong screwdriver in between the fork tongs and then hit the handle with a hammer and the fork immediately dislodged so I could unscrew it 
If yours is on very difficult, you may have to use WD-40 or some sort of other rust removal system. Next, we need to remove the auger screws. There are three one quarter inch hex head screws. Two are here easily seen to be removed, and there's one hidden behind the foam strip. Make sure you have your hand underneath the auger when you remove the last screw, or have it on a protective mat when it falls out. Next, the wire trunk is held in by this rubber grommet. I used a flathead screwdriver and simply pressed in on the rubber portion to remove the wire trunk and then liberated it from the air handler case. From here, you can start removing wires from the air handler. There's a super small wire that goes from this trunk to the ice maker fan. Then there are two wires that go to the auger solenoid that need removed, and then you have the two wires going to the auger itself. You don't have to remove all of them, but it does make it easier if you remove them. Next, you can remove the fan. Be very careful on how you pull it out as the fan blades and supports are very fragile. I slowly, gently dislodged it from the sides like this with a screwdriver, but a faster way would probably be to insert the screwdriver from the front grill and push on the corners of the fan gently. Next, you have the small white bucket glide that is held here in by a small Phillips head screw. Remove the screw and the guide, and then now there are finally two quarter inch screws that hold the solenoid in place. Take them out and the solenoid will pop out easily. The entire air handler has now been gutted and we're ready to install all the pieces to the new system. Note that this air handler has two things versus the earlier portion of the video when I showed the individual pieces. This particular one had the black foam gasket for the fan pre-installed to the handler. Additionally, the gray gasket was pre-installed on this one too, and on other versions, these may not be installed, so you would have to install them. I'm not sure why there's a difference between the two kits, so you may need to modify or add these depending on your situation. But on this particular handler, I did have to remove the black gasket before installing the fan. I did this simply by using a screwdriver and pressing on it from the front grill of the handler. With the black foam gasket out, you can then route the wire trunk through the handler like the original one, through the plastic. This is rather easy to do and note that I kept the auger motor installed on the trunk during most of this installation. Although I would probably suggest removing the wires from the auger to give you an easier time moving everything around. Next you install the solenoid back into the handler. The white plastic piece slides on the fingers of the air handler and it's not easy to show on camera but you should be able to see this pretty easy in the video. The solenoid can only install one way on the handler as the holes for the screw will be exposed to the front of the handler, the wire spades to the harness will only be allowed to be installed one way as well. Once you have the solenoid in, install the two screws and then install the two wires from the harness onto the solenoid. According to Frigidaire, the orientation of these two wires does not matter regardless of collar. Next, it's time to install the auger motor to the new handler. At this stage, I still have the wire trunk again installed on the auger motor and I found that removing the wires made this much easier to move the auger around to install it, but it's your choice if you do this or not. Simply fit the auger into the air handler. You'll have to have one hand on the air handler on the front system as the motor shaft will protrude and it has to go through the front of the system. There are three screw holes that need lined up in the system for the screws to be installed properly on the front. Once you have the auger fit in, reinstall the three small black quarter inch hex head screws to the motor. You may have to tighten these up slightly to get it to line up properly because I noticed when you install one screw all the way, the other two may not line up properly. So slowly go and work all three in any order that you choose. Next, I'm installing the auger guide into place. You want to slot the plastic guide into the very bottom of the air handler slot, then reinstall the Phillips head screw into place. Next, let's install the fan to the air handler. You will need to fit the fan into the silicone gasket the Frigidaire provided. Each corner of the gasket has small triangles that will fit over the fan, and I found this to be uh, kind of difficult. Make sure to take extra special care when installing because this gasket is a very tight fit over the fan, and it's possible to snap fan blades or the fan supports during the installation. So again, be very careful. Next, install the fan to the black foam gasket. There is a nook for the fan to fit in on the front of the gasket and the fan label needs to face towards what would be the front of the air handler. The wire harness will also orient into a small channel on the side as well and that's going to be your main guide to make sure it goes in the right way. From here you install the fan and foam gasket into the air handler. There is a small notch in the air handler plastic that will help you orient the foam gasket to the right direction. 
The fan wire needs routed in this small little notch or channel here. Press the foam down into the handler and some small plastic retainers should snap the foam into place once it is securely into the handler. Next, install the foam gasket strip that will hide the auger motor screw that we had to take off earlier in the video. The gasket next will go on the bottom of the air handler as you see on the screen. Then we're gonna install the auger fork back to the auger motor. Remember that this is countersunk, so you need to turn it counterclockwise to screw it down. I went ahead and used the screwdriver and hammer again once that fork was installed tightly to just give it a little bit of extra security on the auger shaft as well. Now the next part of this fix is contrary to the manual, so I apologize if I'm wrong, but I found this way easier to do. So if you wanna do it, do it the exact way Frigidaire suggests that's in the manual, otherwise here's how I did it. With this new all metal air handler, instead of building it on the evaporator in the fridge, I'm just building it right here and then sliding it on later. To do this, I'm installing the new wire harness holder into the evaporator cover. It presses in and then you rotate it 90 degrees to install it into the metal handler and it will snap into place. Next, I'm going to take the evaporator clamshell and place the front end with the harness piece into the rear of the evaporator clamshell and press the metal together to create the assembly, just like I would on the refrigerator. But note the old air handler versus the new one, they're a little bit different, but it really is just about that wire harness orientation for later on when we put it into the refrigerator. Next, I'm taking one of the metal tape strips and removing the paper backing on it. I'm going to slowly use the tape lengthways to insulate the entire assembly on the left side, the right side, and then the angled pieces at the bottom, but leaving enough room at the bottom for the drain tube. This insulates the entire assembly and it's all very snug and uniform. Now, if you go through the manual and read how they do it, they will have you install the pieces horizontally and leave quite a bit of air gaps in the handler. And from all my experiences with Samsung ice makers, I don't like air gaps. I think it creates a lot of a problem. So that's why I'm installing it this way. And at least for me, it seems to work well. Once every area is insulated, one of the final steps is to re-insulate the top and rear of the ice box. Remove the old tape and gasket foam from the unit. You may need to use a putty knife to help you out on this step. Once you have the top cleaned off reasonably well, take the square foam gasket that was included with the new kit, remove the tape as well as the middle foam area and knock it out, then install the foam square to the area where the old foam was taken off. Once you have that foam square in, you should still have a ton of metal tape left, so use part of it to insulate the areas on the ice box as we have here. This is how the manual says to do it. This is to remove areas of moisture that could invade the ice box itself. Again, the key here is to get rid of as much moisture as possible that could get into your ice maker, which generally causes the issues. Finally, remove the old damaged foam from the rear of the ice box. Often this is damaged and that new air handler we have has a far more robust gasket system on it. Use your best to remove what you can with a putty knife or hard plastic bristled brush. Finally, one th last thing to note is the gasket that needs installed on the air handler. In the first kit I ordered, which is the one I used for this, the gasket was already pre-installed on the air handler, but the second kit I got, the gasket was not installed. You'll have to go around the edges of the handler and install this gasket. Make sure the seams are flush. If it was pre-installed though, and you've done all these different modifications like installed the auger, it's possible that the gasket could have rolled up or off and create air gaps. You wanna make sure it's very firmly put around all the edges of the air handler system. Make sure it's fitted around real well. And then now we are ready to get the ice maker reinstalled. Now we are in the home stretch to put everything back together. First, you still have a ton of the silver tape left. Use enough to cover up the three top slots of the shelf support bracket and then about two inches above that. Next, cut off any cable ties on the evaporator if there are any. Then notice that the metal evaporator cover that we've assembled already has two small fingers on the inside of the window. If you wanna to try to slide the whole cover on, they need gently pulled out to be flush with the front of the metal. This will allow you to slide the whole assembly in one piece onto the evaporator. The assembly needs to be lifted as high as possible so that the very bottom V notch is centered in the drain hole area for proper flow. Once you have it centered, press in on the metal tabs in that window slightly back in place or with a pair of needle nose pliers to lock the cover into the evaporator so it does not move. Once you have this done, 
insert the wire harness into the bottom of the plastic wire harness holder, the one we installed at the very beginning of the assembly process for the evaporator. Once you have this locked in place and it should just clip in, there are a few ways the wires on the defrost sensor and everything should route, but they shouldn't overhang too much on the left side like you see here so that they don't interfere with the gasket. Either flow them over the top of the evaporator cover or immediately to the left side and you can secure it using extra metal tape that we have from starting this repair. This is what it should look like at the end for reference. Next, you need to install the air handler to the chassis, and of course, my camera decided not to film this part very well either. When you install the air handler, you want to make sure that the drain tube on the bottom of the handler lines up with the assembly in the rear of the refrigerator. Once you have it slotted into the drain hole, make sure the wire harness from the handler is clipped into place, and if you need extra room on the wires inside the air handler, I did have to take it out and reposition them a little bit. There should be ample room to maneuver the wires to clip into the harness on the evap cover. Once you have that done, you can just pivot the handler up and on top of the evaporator making a proper seal. From here, you're going to go ahead and insert the three screws that need installed with a quarter inch hex head screwdriver or drill gun. You have two on the right side and then one in the upper left corner. The air handler that Frigidaire provides could have a fourth screw hole, but you are not going to use it. The two screws on the right again are really easy to install, but the one in the upper left corner is notoriously difficult and we had to use that extension to get it out earlier. The secret to installing this final screw is to use a quarter inch hex head drill bit that's on an extension, but secure it by using a little bit of masking tape to hold the screw into the hex head drill bit. This will secure it so when you drive it in, it's not going to fall down into the air handler. This is very difficult without putting the masking tape on, so make sure that you get it in there and then screw it in where it needs to go. With the air handler three screws in place, you can now replace the ice maker fill line. To do this, you're going to start by going behind the refrigerator and removing the green water line from the gray or white fitting. To do this, you can usually just press down on the collar with your fingers and then pull up on the hose. If you find that to be too difficult, you could use a pair of needle nose pliers or a small wrench to press down on the fitting collar while pulling up on the line. Once you have that done, go back to the front of the refrigerator. Use a pair of needle nose pliers to pull the rubber stopper out, which will then pull the rest of the ice maker line out. Once you have that out, you can take the new green ice maker line. To make this a little bit easier to insert, put some dish soap on the ice maker line before installation. Lube it up pretty decently and then slide it into the hole on the top of the fridge. It's a little bit difficult to push the ice maker line into the little hole, but it's going to insert pointing towards the rear of the fridge. And I did not have too many problems pushing it through as far as it could go, but you're going to probably have two or three inches of line that will not fit in even if you push really hard. You're going to need to go to the rear of the refrigerator and then pull the line from that side. This will allow the line to be pulled and set into place. Once you have that done, make sure to reinstall the ice maker water line and the push to connect fitting. Just push it in and then pull it back out a little bit without the collar being depressed and it should lock into place. Now it's time for the ice maker box. It simply will go up and slide into the top of the air handler. Now when you're inserting the ice box, carefully guide the wire harnesses at the top of the refrigerator and the one on the rear of the box so they don't get pinched or damaged. Just carefully navigate them as you set the box in place. The ice maker box could set into place with all the screws lining up, but in my case it was not fully set in the rear because of the air handler gasket. It did not line up perfectly correct, so what I did was I took my plastic hammer I used earlier on the auger tongs and used that to tap the box into place a little bit more easily. I then was able to install the two screws at the top of the ice maker to lock it into place. Next we're going to install the ice maker. Remember that I had to install a brand new ice maker that was replaced due to the old one being cracked. This one is a new revised version. The old wire harness does not route the exact same way on this new ice maker like the old one did. Normally on the old one, you'd reinsert the wire trunk on the top and use two wire ties which are included with the repair kit to lock it into place. But in my case, this new ice maker, it routed through the right side and went straight through, which I thought was so much easier to deal with and did not require 
wire ties. Once you have the wire harness pulled through the ice maker assembly, the whole assembly needs to rest on the four metal posts on the top of the ice maker cabinet. You'll slot them into place and then press rearward to lock them in. And it should just simply click into place. When you press everything in, don't press the ice maker. It's very flimsy, especially where the ice tray is. Press in with the chassis. And if you have to remove it, pull the chassis, not the ice maker assembly. If you happen to need the ice assembly like I did, check the description for the exact model I used. It seemed to be way more better built than what Frigidaire originally used. In my experience, I would even consider replacing it even if yours is okay. With that done, clip the two wire harnesses into place. There's only one way that both of these will go as they are different sizes. Now you'll want to install the ice maker wire cover into place with a correct screw. There are two tabs on the rear part of the ice maker wire cover. They'll slot into the top of the ice maker assembly itself, and then you just pivot it in place and then put the screw in. Now you'll put the ice maker cover on the front of the unit. There are two retention tabs, one on each side of the little cover, and then you'll see the relative retention tabs that these need pressed in on the ice maker. You're going to push the cover on and then press it in and then lift up on the cover to slot it into place correctly. Now that you have that done, there are just three final screws that need to be installed to finish the job out. And here are the location for each of the screws. Put all three screws back in. Now you can put the ice bucket back in and you are going to have a perfect ice maker. But I want to give you one final tip. I've done ice maker videos for Samsung's and we've repaired a lot of them at this point. And one thing I would suggest considering is sealing the edges of the ice maker housing with an RTV sealant. I use SIL 4500 brand food grade RTV sealant. I went ahead and sealed every seam of this cabinet after the installation and I have to tell you it worked absolutely amazing. Now truth be told I didn't install the ice maker fill line in the initial install because I installed the repair kit that didn't even include it. So I had to take the ice maker out again and this happened two weeks after the original filming and here's what the evaporator system looked like afterwards. There was no ice in the evaporator system whatsoever. I can't say for certain that the SIL 4500 made all the difference because I know the repair kit worked really well, but I think this is a cheap way to add some extra insurance to make sure this installation is a final fix and a surefire solution for you. Remember, all the links for all the products are in the description, and it's also a pinned comment as well. I hope you have a great day and this video helps you. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content.